talk about foot stuff. <laughs> We're gonna talk about feet. We've talked about clothing, now let's talk about footwear, which as you may have guessed, is extremely important when backpacking. In fact, the footwear you choose can make or break your entire trip. There are several backpacking trips that stand out in my mind as wonderful experiences, but where I distinctly remember wanting to chop off my feet at the ankles after about two hours. You don't want that. So finding the right pair of shoes for you will be extremely important. Note the key words in that phrase being for you. Because guys, we all have different preferences and needs when it comes to hiking footwear. I, for example, prefer a zero drop hiking shoe with a wide toe box so that my toes really have a lot of freedom of movement. Josh prefers a mid-rise boot. You may prefer or even need a supportive arch or a tall boot to lock in your ankle or a little extra squish in the sole. Chances are you won't know until you've tried a bunch of options. I hiked and backpacked in a lot of uncomfortable boots before I found the ones I really love. They're ultra lone peaks, by the way. In any case, the key to finding your perfect pair will probably be to test out a lot of shoes and see what makes your feet the happiest. Borrow them from friends if you can. Buy a used pair or two just to see how they perform. Head to your local outdoor store and try on a dozen pairs or so just to see how they feel. If you do, make sure to wear the type of socks you'll be wearing when you backpack and try them on in the middle or at the end of the day when you've already been on your feet for several hours. When you purchase a new pair, only wear them around the house for a week or two to see if they're comfortable enough to hike in. And then take them out on day hikes to make sure that they're not only comfortable, but that they can handle rough terrain. And here's a pro tip. If you buy a pair of boots or shoes from REI, take them out and find them to be uncomfortable or just unsuitable, the retailer will let you return them within a year of purchase. Rad, right? Now, some boots do require a break-in period. I don't buy leather boots or shoes, but if you do, those are the kinds that most frequently need broken in. So make sure to wear them for several weeks around the house, around town, and on day hikes to make sure they get softened up and aren't gonna give you blisters or be uncomfortably stiff once you hit the trail for real. Synthetic shoes, on the other hand, rarely need broken in. Most hiking shoes or boots that I've purchased have been comfortable and flexible right out of the box. Only once can I remember a pair of synthetic boots that needed to be broken in before they were really ready to go the distance. Next up, the big question, whether you should buy waterproof shoes or boots. <laughs> ah yes, the age old debate. To which the answer depends on your preferences, but also where you'll be hiking and in what conditions. For summer hikes, I almost always opt for non-waterproof shoes. That's because waterproofing tends to reduce breathability and make boots hotter and your feet sweaty. I do not like sweaty feet, so I like non-waterproof shoes. That said, I do a lot of hiking and backpacking around Texas where it's hot and there aren't frequent water crossings. Plus, since my shoes are light and don't have that waterproof barrier, they dry out more quickly if they do get wet. If, on the other hand, you are hiking in the summer in a place with a lot of shallow stream crossings or a significant amount of mud, you may prefer to wear mid-rise waterproof boots so that you can quickly and easily splash through without worrying about your socks getting wet. On the other, other other hand, how many hands do we have now? If you're hiking in wet, humid conditions like in New England and frequently experience high water crossings or a lot of heavy rain during your backpacking trips, waterproof shoes or boots aren't really gonna do you a lot of good. Because once water gets into waterproof shoes, it stays there. One option is to bring a pair of sandals with you. I always backpack with an ultralight pair of sandals that I change into when I get to camp, which I highly recommend for comfort and convenience, just by the way. But you can also change into those sandals at creek crossings. This will keep your boots dry, plus offer an opportunity to cool your toes. Cold weather backpacking, of course, is another story. If you're hiking in snow or there are shallow, frigid water crossings, you definitely want mid-rise to high-rise waterproof boots. Because frankly, keeping your feet dry and warm is of the utmost importance. But back to shoe selection. When you do pick out a new pair of boots, get at least a half size larger than your day-to-day -day shoes, sometimes even a whole size larger. This is so that when your feet swell after a long day of hiking, 
hiking, they have room to expand, but it also gives your toes room to slide forward on long stretches of downhill trail. If you neglect to size up, <laughs> your toes are very likely going to be taking a beating as they ram into the toes of your boots. As for tying said boots or shoes, we're going to throw a bonus video below with tips and tricks for lacing and tying to really dial in the fit and comfort of your boots or shoes and also keep you from having to bend over and retie or relace every couple of miles. Long story short, finding the perfect pair of boots or shoes will likely involve a fair amount of trial and error. If you're lucky enough to find a comfortable pair the first time around, pfft, dang. Just, I'm jealous. It took me years. But know that even if you're struggling to find the perfect fit, there are a wide variety of lacing techniques, insoles and inserts, plus just different styles of shoes, ranging from barefoot to ultra supportive to heck even sandals, all of which are appropriate for backpacking. Just make sure to take care of your feet when heading outdoors for an extended period of time. So when you're ready to find that perfect pair, good luck. Lace them up and wander on. Insert foot jokes here. I don't know any foot jokes. Feel free to share them. I love a good foot joke or a hand joke or a ear joke. I, does that exist? <laughs>